In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father in heaven, we thank you. Jehovah, we exalt you. Thank you for Monday. It was powerful. Oh my Lord, my God, it was wonderful. Thank you for Tuesday. It was too doubtful. But we know you reserve the best for the last day. Tonight, oh God, give us double for our trouble in Jesus' name. For everyone under my voice tonight, ah, it doesn't matter how you came in here, ah, you will not go empty handed in Jesus' name. Every satanic umbrella upon anyone under my voice, Jehovah, we command the fire of the Holy Ghost. Consume them in the name of Jesus. All those assigned to prop up the umbrella or that have a hand in our problem, Jehovah, tonight, oh God, cause them to somersault seven times. Thank you, Father. Tonight, let the rain fall. Let our heavens open. Give every one of us a blessing tonight. In the name of Jesus, thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. If you believe God for tonight, jump up and shout hallelujah. Amen. It is well with you. Please sit down. Something will happen tonight. Tell your neighbor, say something must happen tonight. I'm not going to come here empty. And I will not leave here empty. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Thank God for Monday. We thank God for our pastor, Pastor Ayola, who that says, stop them before they stop you. And we saw the move and the power of God. As a matter of fact, testimonies have been pouring in since that Monday that we have had, you know. Although many of them didn't share their testimony, but <clears throat> I don't know why. People come tell me testimonies that they don't share openly. But it's good to share um, testimonies openly. So that you can put the devil to shame and it can be permanent. It is permanent in Jesus' name. We also heard Pastor Menike, who also came on Tuesday and began to minister in the same power and the spirit of the, of the living God that every troubler must be cut off. And he told us who the troublers are, uh, household enemy, you know, uh, witches and wizards, unfriendly friends, you know, carnal nature and all of that. Praise the name of God bless you. God bless you. I like these guys on the computer. God will bless you. Praise the Lord. Today, I just want to share very, very briefly with you. Like I said, the big guys deal with the topic and they, they say everything I need to say. On Monday, they will, the deliverance guy will come and finish the whole thing. The Tuesday, they will come again, finish the remaining. And... Um, the small boy just comes and I'll just do the small that I can. Praise the name of the Lord. But I know you will be blessed tonight. If you believe you'll be blessed, shout hallelujah. Amen. The life of a man is written in chapters. Some chapters in the life of a man is good. Some chapters are bad. Some chapters in the life of a man is bitter. Some chapters, they are sweet. I don't know what chapter of your life that is playing out now. Whether it's the sour one, whether it's the bitter one, whatever it is. But one thing, an assurance that I have from God, the good news I have for you is that it doesn't matter what level or what chapter you are now everything that constitutes sadness and bitterness in your life will be cut off by fire Amen. you didn't hear me I say it doesn't matter what level you are everything that is causing you to, to weep or to sorrow or to, to be bitter in your life tonight they will be cut off by fire Amen. in the name of Jesus this is the major reason why God has asked me to come here tonight. The vernacular people say, 
if the calabash is turned face down, we will do what? We will open it. If it refuses to be open, we will break it. It is tonight, not tomorrow. Because that calabash must open. I say it must open by fire. In the name of Jesus. And if there is anyone that has put his foot on your ground, I'll put my foot. <laughs> it cannot go. Ah, Tonight, Holy Ghost fire, destroy them. Such feet will be cut off in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to look at the chapters in the life of some people. Anna is my first part of call. Chapter 1 in the life of Anna was a chapter of delay. Got married like everybody, expected to have a child like everybody, but the child didn't come. Long delay that took her to Shiloh up and down and nothing was happening. Chapter 1. Because of it, she experienced closed mouth. Her mouth was closed. When Penina is talking, pa, 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 she cannot talk. Because she has no testimony. Chapter 1 in the life of this woman was a chapter of sadness. A chapter of bitterness. It was a chapter in which the, the, she, she was embarrassed, ostracized. Nobody wanted to talk with her. She was on her own. No child, nothing whatsoever. Continuous weeping. She will not eat. Does that sound like you? You are ostracized oh, because you don't have a child or because you don't have what others have. They push you aside. You are alone. Although there are many people around, but you are still lonely. You live a life of sadness. Every day you are weeping when people are not there. And when people come... <laughs> Yeah, sister Hannah, you clean your face. Is that your condition? The God that visited Hannah will visit you here tonight. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you. The sound of your amen will determine the speed with which God will answer you tonight. And, and I mean it. But in chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 2. If you look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, the story is there. I, I don't want to begin to, you know, just write it down. You can read the whole of chapter 1 of 1 Samuel. It's a story of sorrow. But immediately we started chapter 2 from verse 1. The Bible called it the song of Hannah. Things changed for Hannah. I don't know who you are. The Spirit of the Lord asked me to tell you. That from now, things will change for the better. Your story will change for the better. In the name of Jesus. In chapter 2, the mouth of Anna was enlarged. Read it, it's there. And Anna prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is now exalted in the Lord. My mouth that was shut before is enlarged over my enemies. Because that's rejoicing in me. That will be your testimony. In the name of Jesus. The mockery from Hannah stopped. Anna mocked her God. When she goes to Shiloh to come back, she will just be laughing. You're wasting your time. But all those who are mocking your God, before the end of today, they will bow to your God. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says Anna began to sing a new song. Because all her mockers were cut off. Tonight, as God begins to cut off all your troublers, you will begin to sing a new song. I say you will sing a new song. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
for everyone who is in chapter 1 with the chapter of sorrow I close that chapter by fire as I stand on the altar of the living God by the authority of the word of God I open chapter 2 for you in the name of Jesus you will begin to sing a new song you will laugh last your testimonies will be air tingling testimonies in the name of Jesus they will hear you again that child they will see your child again I say it will come double this time in the name of Jesus every troubler and their children like Penina after chapter 1 they didn't hear Penina again in chapter 2 they didn't hear Penina the children that she has more than one nobody heard of them again after tonight all your tormentors and their children they will not hear of them again in the name of Jesus you will sing a new song come on now that will be your song in the name of Jesus Christ it is your turn to sing I said you will sing in the name of Jesus let's look at the story of Job every man has chapters in his life Job in the case of Job his transformation did not come quickly like that of Anna praise the name of the Lord the chapter 1 of Job was a chapter in which he was rich prosperous the most prosperous man in the east and God blessed him he was fruitful he had 10 children 7 boys and 3 girls but his story in that same chapter 1 the story changed very early in life that's how life is some people start up well they were born in the home with TV, air conditioner they carried them to school primary school in a car chauffeur driven to secondary school Queen's College, King's College Big Big Adrao School they started well but as soon as they finished and they come on their own sit and say eh, you don't come up for your father's house this is the time to begin your next chapter you see some of them who you knew in school who were really tush you understand they are looking like a gagoo in verse 13 of the same chapter 1 of Job evil began to hit this man troublers entered into his life that he could not get rid of like Pastor Ayola has said he couldn't help get rid of them the same chapter his story changed into one of sorrow he had cycle of calamities woes befalling him he lost all that he worked for all his life plus 10 children died in one day that's a man who started very well the troublers had succeeded in changing his glory to that of an ox please the lord they changed his glory to that of an ox that eats grass. You can find that in Psalm 106 verse 20. Psalm 106 verse 20. By what I call the power of recreation. Agbara Tunda. God did not create him that way. But the troublers of his life recreated him. Is that not what is happening to some of us? The way we are now is not the way that God created us. It is the wicked troublers. 
They have used sickness to change our figure, to change how we walk, to change how we talk. Uh, that's not how God created you. They changed his glory into the similitude of an ox that eats grass. Here, Job. In chapter 2 of his life. Binga, can you get me an anchor, please? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless you. Amen. So in that verses 14 to 20, the man went through a cycle of bad news. Generated in quick succession by his troublers. Is there a troubler around here? <laughs> they are afraid. All right. Don't worry. Let them be afraid though. Because tonight, not tonight. Hello? I said they go here and win tonight. I said, you could get me. Oh, get me reading about her. Oria yegala, okala ne. Ndi rom gawo, gawo ne. Obiari bumge bu omuya. It is tonight in the name of Jesus. Let them blow the wind. I was just going to say that the enemy released a wind from the wilderness that broke the house in which the children of Job was, and they all died. And then wind just came. Every evil wind directed to your direction. Return to sender. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Job from verse 14 to 20. Read it on your own. I'm not reading it now. The Bible says, as they were talking, one person came, say, All the asses have died. As he was saying, ah, they came again. All the goats have died. Ah, all the cow has died. That news, bad news were coming in quick succession. By the time we got to verse 21, look at what Job said. In verse 21, Job said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return thither. The Lord give it. The Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Is it the Lord that took the children? Uh, sometimes, you know, the problem of Job lasted this long because he himself was compromising. Job didn't pray like Hannah. She didn't pray. She said, uh, the Lord give it, the Lord take it. So the devil came and took my child. He said, the Lord give it, the Lord take it. For where? I will fight the devil to the last. God cannot give me a child and take it. God is not wicked. Hello? Can God take your child that he gave you? If anything happens to the child that is not good, who is responsible? John 10, 10 says he has come for to kill, to steal. Job said, the Lord give it, the Lord take it. The devil said, very good. <laughs> you are blaming God. I will do more. I will do more. But Job at the end of that chapter, from verse 22, in chapter 2, rather than being reverted like Anna, his suffering continued because he did not pray. The suffering continued. You may have come here empty, like Job. By the end of chapter 1, he had gone empty. The richest man in the world. And had lost all his children. I need to pray for someone here. I don't care how you came in. I don't care how you started this year, January. But this year, January, you will not go empty in the name of Jesus. The Bible said a great wind came. And blew the house down. 
There's evil wind all over the place. But concerning you, from this now till the end of this year, any evil wind that is dispatched from the devil to your family or to your children, in the name above all names, he will return to sender in Jesus' name. Pastor Emenike told us yesterday about the testimony of that woman who they dispatched evil to. And at the end of the day, that evil returned and, and destroyed the whole. He said the man, no, nobody knew what happened. The house just burnt down and they burnt, the man was burnt inside the house like Guguru. Hello? All those who are troubling you, if, if they don't stop now, before the end of tomorrow, they will become popcorn in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In verse 19. In verse 19. Thank you, Father. All the children, they collapse. The, 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 the building collapse and they die. You will not die. Uh, definitely, your children will not die. It doesn't matter the condition that they are right now. Even if they are sick right now, as I speak, the hand of the Lord, the healing hand of Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, the God that healed us, he will touch your children in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not know the grave of your children in the name of Jesus Christ. All those who wish you and your children dead, they will die before you. In the name of Jesus, I stand upon the altar. I prophesy into your life. Throughout this year, evil will not befall you. Calamity will not come near your dwelling place. In the name of Jesus, I said you will not see it with your ear eyes. You will not hear it with your ears. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says a thousand will fall by the left and ten thousand by the right. It will not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you see the reward of the wicked. In the name of Jesus. From verse 14 to verse 20. Cycle of bad news. There are some of us since last year. In any news that comes is bad news. This person has died this month. Next one have died next month. They have we're, we're stolen this next. Bad, bad news. I stand on this altar. I prophesy into your life. Hold your ears. Let somebody hold their ears. These ears that you are holding will never hear bad news in the name of Jesus. Every cycle of bad news that you have had before, from today, I command it to stop. From now on, any news that enters your ears, it will provoke hallelujah. You will have testimonies. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every power that plans to truncate your joy, this new year, it shall be frustrated. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The man remained in bondage. This satanic bondage. From chapter 1 to chapter 20. To chapter 41. Hello? From chapter 1 to which chapter? Anna's one was from chapter 1 to what? Very short. Very short. That's why I know that because you came... It doesn't matter the amount of trouble you are going through. Your trouble will end in chapter 1 in Jesus' name. Your healing, your victory, your blessing, 
will not be delayed in the name of Jesus. Chapter 41. But in chapter 42, the story changed. Hello? I say in chapter 42, it was long, but at least it got there. Hello? Eleda Adoyo eh, is the new, the noise that will be plenty. You don't even hear, anyway, it doesn't matter. It took a long time, but it ended. The Bible says, surely, that's an end. And thine expectation shall not be cut off. I don't care what delay you are going through right now. Delay in, in marriage, delay in childbirth, delay in getting a job, delay in admission. Whatever delay you are going through, after tonight, it will end in the name of Jesus. Your expectation will no longer be cut off in the name of Jesus Christ. If anything will be cut off, it will be your troubler. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, shout hallelujah. The Lord said, I should tell somebody, right now, he says for me to tell you that that sickness will not go beyond now. Oh, your days of weeping is expired. From now on, you will begin to laugh. I say you will laugh. I say you will laugh. Our daddy in the camp told us that it doesn't matter the condition now that we will laugh last. For those of you who are in the camp, is that not so? Ah, he may, the enemy may be laughing now. Ah, but after now, power will change hand. Those who are laughing at you, they will be crying. They will put hand in their eye. Tears will not come out. In the name of Jesus. In chapter 42. Chapter 42. Let somebody say chapter 42. <laughs> God restored everything that Job had lost. He restored it twice. Double. Hello? He restored it how? Double. The Lord, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job than his beginning. So he had 14. If you calculate it, you will see that they are twice what he had before. That's why I want to prophesy to the life of someone that from today, you will be restored. From everywhere that you have been displaced, you will be restored. Those who sent you out of your husband's home, you will be restored. Those who sent you out of job because they say they are retrenching, you will be restored. In the name of Jesus. Somebody receive double. Receive double. For your trouble, receive double. In the name of Jesus. Lastly, look at verse 11 of Job 20. Look at verse 11. Verse 11. That's what's going to happen to you. The time he was sick, nobody visited him. Nobody visited him. Relations, friends, they ran away from him. His three friends, Eliphaz and the others, they ran away from him. But when God restored the captivity of Job, see, then came there unto him. How many of his brethren? How many of them? Uh, how many of his sisters? How many of acquaintances? They came. They were doing what? Eating. Away. Uh, eating and drinking. They are coming again. I said they are coming again. All those who ran away, they are coming again. They will eat in your home. They will drink in your home. You will feed them again. In the name of Jesus. When they ask them where they come from, they say, Ah, now, what's the key house? Eh, what's the key Ah, the man where they say, Ah, 
Something doing better for Ramu. Oh, it will be better for you. In the name of Jesus. See, after eating, see, they would not go free of, free of charge. They ate bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him, comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought unto him. They still, they didn't know. Anyway, every man also gave him what? They give you what? <laughs> Which currency do you want? Naira. Eh? Lira. Ew. Pound sterling. US dollar. Euro. Receive it in Jesus' name. As you have spoken in the ears of God. Don't be surprised. Very soon. When you come to Pastor Mede, you want to give Pastor Mede something. You, you have planned to give 5,000 naira. As you just put your hand, you just bring 5,000 euro. Don't put it back. Oh. Don't say, ah, sorry, Pastor, na, na mistake, na mistake. Give him the 5,000 euro. Because God will double it for you. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to begin to look at numbers. I want to look at numbers. We're talking about restoration. You know, on Sunday, I told you that someone says that 2014 is the year of restoration. You know that. Since we're talking about Job's restoration, that was in his years. I, we don't, I don't know when it, whether it's, it must be before Christ. Job was before Christ. Aha, uh -huh. so it's B.C., but it's AD that we are now. And your own is 2014. Give me Genesis 2014. Let's see what does it say. 2014. Genesis. What does this say? Somebody had lost everything, including his wife. Come and see what happened. And Abimelech the king, he took sheep, oxen, men servant, women servant, and gave them to who? And then he restored who? his wife. Year of restoration. Everything they took from you, you will get it back. You will get extra. In the name of Jesus. Your story in 2014, it will change for the better. In this 2014, all your troublers, God will cut them off. I said they will cut off. In the name of Jesus. You will begin to sing. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody come and see you. Everybody come and see you. Come and see what the Lord. Ah, he will do it. He will do it. See what the Lord. Everybody come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Hallelujah. Every number in the Bible has significance. Look at 2014. You see what he brought out for you? A Jobe. A Jobe of Jesus Christ. Restoration. I have hope this 2014. That car I didn't buy last year. This year I go buy it. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Yesterday was the seventh. Is that not so? I told you, seven stands for what? Perfection. Now let's look at Genesis chapter seven and see whether there's correlation. Genesis chapter seven and verse one. Seven represents perfection, it represents completion, it represents rest. No wonder 
in the chapter 7 of the life of Noah, God perfected his plans of family deliverance, safety from death and frustration in that chapter. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou, all thy house, into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. God said, I will kill everybody in the world with flood. But concerning this man, he said, you and your family, come. You are not going to die. It doesn't matter how many people die on the road. Your family will not be there. People have anxiety over 2015. In fact, the Geo himself said 2014 is going to be the year that will determine what will happen to individual and to this country. Now, this year, 2014, fortunately, it is a year of what for you? Restoration. As far as you are concerned, you have had the result. No, be so. I said you don't, have, you don't hear result. What is your result? Restoration. Hallelujah. Everybody will die. That's what God says. But Noah and his family, you will not die. <laughs> I'm bringing you into an ark. So it is the, the chapter, you know, of, of perfection, of deliverance from death. But because if you look at chapter 6 of it, in verse 17 to 18, if you look at chapter 6, verse 17 to 18, that's before chapter 7. You see that chapter 6 was only full of promises, promises, promises. I will do, I will do, I will do is what God is promising. He said, and behold, I even I do bring a flood water. God said, and a flood that will take, finish the earth. To destroy all flesh wearing the breath of life from under heaven and everything that's in the earth shall die. Verse 18. But with thee, I will, is that not so? That is, I will, not that he has done it to, I will establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, and thy son, and thy wife, and thy son's wives. I will, it was promises in, in, in chapter, chapter 6. Because 6 is the number of man. But in chapter 7, it was no longer a promise. God turned it into an action word. I prophesy into your life. Hitherto. You have been hearing promises, promises, and promises. Because you have entered chapter 7, which is the chapter of perfection. Every promise made to you shall be manifest in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. So shall it be. For those who were here yesterday, that seventh, which was seventh, I repeat to you again, your miracle will no longer be delayed. Disappointment and delay will be far from your home. In the name of Jesus. Oh, there will be flood. Yes, there will be catastrophe. Yes, but you and your family, you will not die in the flood this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will not bury your loved one in the name of Jesus Christ. And those who plan death for you, they will replace you in the grave. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah 28 verse 18. The Lord reminded me of this because of some people who were always talking that they, they are going to die and they want to die for whatever, for whatever. Hear the word of the Lord. It is not you who will decide what's going to happen to you. You may want to die. If God says you will not die, you will not die. And in any case, I stand as the representative of God. Every agreement you have with death, I cancel it in Jesus' name. <laughs> Bible says all your covenant with death shall be disannulled. Your agreement with hell, it shall not stand. All those who have agreed with the devil that they will die this year, I cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. Every agreement with the grave that I am coming into the grave, I disannul in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree to the life of those hearing me, you will not die. You will live. You will declare the glory of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my father. 
Noah and his family, they were singled out for signs and for wonders. I decree unto you also, anyone who is here that is suffering from any sickness whatsoever, I pull you out of sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. Every disease, every affliction that has afflicted you up till now, they are troublers. I cut them off in the name of Jesus. I don't care what the doctors have said concerning your health. I don't care the doctor's report. They say you have diabetes. They say you have blood pressure. They say you have cancer. The Bible says, who is he that speaketh? And it cometh to pass. When the Lord had not commanded. Every negative word that has been spoken to your health, I cancel by fire. In the name of Jesus. Noah was favored. The man at the pool of Bethesda, 38 years, pool of Bethesda. The Bible says when God, Jesus got there, he was the one that Jesus saw and said, take your bed and go. That was favor. There may be many sick people in the house today, but now you, God, go first answer. In the name of Jesus. Who is that singular person? If you are the one, let your hallelujah be the loudest. Hallelujah. Amen. God will single you out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Of all those looking for wife, husband, they were all single ladies. They were working. Rebecca was amongst them. It was Rebecca that they chose. Hello? I don't care how many singles are in the house today. You are number one in the name of Jesus. God will single you out. In the name of Jesus. By this time next year, when you're coming, you will come with your husband. You will come with your wife. In the name of Jesus. Any troubler that says you will not marry this year, cut off in the name of Jesus. Some of us are walking around with satanic veil. Take veil, cover our eyes. Like Lagbaja. Who will know who is going? Nobody. Fine girl. Wonderfully made. Beautifully made. Belonging to God. You are wonderfully made. You are fearfully made. You belong to God. You resemble him. That is why the devil, whenever he hear you singing, you are God's. Oh, the apple of I say that is why the devil tonight, whenever he hear you, hey, you are God's own. Every satanic veil covering your face that is not letting the guys see you, I tear them to pieces, I burn them to ashes, I display the beauty of God. They will rush you. They will see you. They will appreciate you. They will love you. When will that happen? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Out of those looking for job, Uncle, because of my time, I don't want to give testimonies of this, this you know, connection, connection thing. Uh, God has done so many connections, no? <laughs> and I still see some connections here. Hello. I'll be giving you a call. Don't worry. I see connection here. At least there are five people that I see this year you are connected already. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Every brother walking with his eyes closed, I command your eyes to open. In the name of Jesus. What about among those looking for job? Who will get the job first? Hello? I've told you so many testimonies. I was in my office. A sister came and said, look, 
I'm suffering. I can't pay my rent. I don't have money. I said, what did you, did you study? She told me, bring your CV. She brought the CV and left it on my table. As she was going downstairs from my office, somebody called me and said, I need somebody in that particular this thing. Ah, he said, Pastor, do you have somebody? I said, ah, of course, I have before, before, self. Not now. I don't get before, before. I picked up my phone. I called the sister. I said, hi, come back. You got a job. He said, ah, Pastor, I'm, I'm not joking. Now. I, I said, come. I joked like that before. She came, I gave her the number of the place, gave her the address. She went there. She's walking there right now. In fact, she's so happy. So happy. Hello. Our son just got a job somewhere. And, you know, because of the nature of his job, he needed to hire about 10 people. She told me, he told me at home. I said, don't look for anybody. All the 10. I get all the 10. I came to my office. I have a file where I put CVs. I pick, pick, 10 CV, give and say, see them. I didn't even know. She told me he employed all the 10 of them. They are working there now. Hello. I say, God will select you for favor. In the name of Jesus. And it is this year. I say, it is this year. All of you who have dreamt of wedding, you have dreamt of new car. You have dreamt of a new home. You have dreamt of a big, of big business. Unique job. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Verse 10 of Genesis 7. We'll soon close. We'll look at chapter 8. Because we're looking with numbers. Today, na, na, na 8. In verse 10, the Bible says... And it came to pass. It came to pass means the thing came to happen. Is that not so? The Lord says I should tell someone that all the word of knowledge that they have been telling you, even the one G.O. has said, the ones I am speaking from the altar that concerns you, he said before the end of tomorrow, there shall be manifestation. Concerning you, his word will not fall to the ground in the name of Jesus. <laughs> uh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. It is happening. I will hear your testimony. And it came to pass. What came to pass? After how many days? After seven days. That the waters of the flood that God started, that have killed people. The waters of the, the flood were upon the earth. Manifestation. Give me the next, uh, next verse. No. Verse 10. After seven days, that is, after the manifestation of, of, of what I just said now concerning your life, after seven days, when is the next day? After seven days. What is the next day? Is the eighth day. What is today? Come with me to chapter eight. Come to chapter eight. It is the eighth day. And then in chapter eight, let's see what happened in chapter eight. Let's see what happened in chapter eight. Hallelujah. And God remembered. Hello. Today is the eighth day. Chapter eight says, God remembered Noah. I stand on the altar of the most high God. Today, God will remember you. Shandarabaliboskima. God will remember you in the name of Jesus. And he says he remembered every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth. And the waters did what? They assuaged. The flood that was killing people. After seven days, day seven, on the eighth day, the water assuaged. Everything that is causing death in your family.
Today is the eighth day. They will stop in the name of Jesus. Every demon responsible for killing people at early age in your family. Every demon that makes children die at young age because it's the eighth day. The water began to assuage. Therefore, those things must die in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, my father. Thank you, my father. <laughs> in First Samuel chapter 1, God remembered Noah. In First Samuel 